there's a lot of things that can come into play in races here. And for more on that, let's head down to James Pike. Now, one of the things that could come into play this evening is tire conservation. We saw it a little bit at Caraway two weeks ago. Luke Fenhouse dominated the opening three quarters of the Pro Lay model feature, and then we had a late caution. And then there was a restart. Caden Quabble got around him, and Luke didn't have any tire left or car left to get back around and get to the race victory. That could be even more important here at Hickory, where the surface is bumpy. You have the new ceiling. It's traditionally one of the most abrasive tracks for tires on the Cars Tour. So drivers are going to have to be very conscious about whether or not they make the decision to go fast and go hard early, or if they wait to use up their stuff until the very end. There are a lot of people that are looking at Luke Fenhouse this evening. He's got a fast car. He's been quick in a lot of these races, but he's not won one yet. The championship competitors, William Sawalich and Caden Quapple, have already been to victory lane. So I caught up with him before qualifying, and I asked him, you know, Luke, with those two having already been to the winner's circle, does that put any more pressure on you to go to victory lane as well? And he told me, well, you know, we haven't necessarily hit top form yet. We're still learning how to communicate as a team. We're learning how to communicate together. But at the same time, we want to win. Everybody at Team Chevy wants us to win. Everybody at Highland Motorsports wants us to win. We need to win. So maybe there is a little bit of pressure, but this may also be the best opportunity he's had this season to go get a victory starting from the front. So we'll just have to watch and wait and see what Luke Fedhouse does tonight. I saw them check the air pressure on the right front, sort of nodded at each other as if it had lost a little bit of PSI and they're going to swap it out. I think maybe the more interesting story is Andrew Grady was pounding his fist alongside the A-post in frustration as they're changing the tire. I think he knew that he had a good car. He was one of the ones that I spoke to earlier and said that he felt like he had a really good long run car. If they got some green flag laps that they might be able to do something with it. But now with this penalty, he's gonna have a lot of work to do in order to get back up into contention. Yeah, so I'm back here in the Kyle Dudley pit, and he tested the motor to try and figure it out, and they tapped the red MSD box in the back, and immediately it was like they almost knew exactly what it was. So it looks like they're going to replace that, and then maybe send him on his way and see what goes. But right behind the carburetor there, that red box with all the connections, that seems to be the issues with Kyle Dudley's machine. Yeah, down here in the Burt Myers, but I just talked to them, asked them what their setup is, and they too took three tires, but they also told me that the car transitions as the run goes on. It starts off tight, but ends up loosening up. So the question for Burt is going to be, does the car loosen up over the course of these last few laps enough for him to drive up to the front and make the pass around Matt Hirschman to try and win this North-South shootout? Of all the drivers that I talked to this afternoon, Deke McCaskill was probably the most emphatic in saying that he thought that tire wear didn't matter. He put the emphasis on track position and said that he thought people were going to push, they were going to push early, that tire wear wasn't going to matter, and that track position above everything else was going to be key. So, we probably shouldn't be surprised then to see that he made that really hard charge to the front. I think he feels like he needs to be up there, and it's going to be easier to maintain track position and defend than it will be to try and make the charge I just wanted to make a point here. Remember at the beginning of this race when we talked about how there were differing tire strategies and some folks said they thought it was better to go and some folks said they thought it was better to save. Look at the drivers in the top 10. Deke McCaskill said he was going to go, but Connor Hall, Mike Looney, Jacob Hefner, Caden Honeycutt, Connor Jones, all of the top 10, all generally known as more aggressive drivers amongst the series. So I think regardless of what happens or who wins this race, it was the push and go and burn your tires up no matter what strategy that is likely going to be the more successful one tonight. Yeah, I know you guys have talked about the motor problems in the booth, but another thing that Jacob Hefner told me earlier today was that the run in Martinsville that he had gave him a ton of confidence. He said at the beginning of the year, I felt like just a local track champion trying to race with the big guys here in the car store. Now, especially after that run a few weeks ago, I feel like I'm a car store driver. He is visibly more confident, visibly more able, and visibly having a really, really good run as we can now turn our attention to Brandon Pierce. Brandon, something with the motor happened. You know the story now a little bit more better than you did a few moments ago. There aren't too many drivers that were in the race that we ran here in 2020 that are back tonight. You're one of them. Do you feel like that extra experience gives you an advantage over most of the field? How tough is it to mentally reset in a situation like this when, you know, originally you're thinking you got maybe an hour, hour and a half from the drop of their green flag to yours, and, and now here we are, and we're definitely going to be starting a lot later than we were. How's that fall upon you? How tough is that for, for you and the rest of the drivers? I've got Braden Rogers with me. Braden, what happened? I do have Bobby down here. Bobby, what happened? 
I do have Caden Quapple with me. And Caden, I saw you looking at the engine bay just a few moments ago. Did you get a sense of what might have happened? Did you feel anything from behind the wheel that indicated what let go on your car? I do have Bobby here. Bobby, what happened with the right front there to put you out? And I am here with William Swalich. And William just qualified the late model and then hopped right back out of that and got into the pro late model. So, William, how difficult is it to transition between qualifying those two different types of race cars? With Vicente Salas, who's making his first ever start in a stock car for Donnie Wilson. Vicente, we know you've got some experience here in iRacing, but what's it like now that you've taken some laps around the real life thing? Why well, I'm with the man who's currently third on the board, Zach Miracle. And Zach, your first time here at Franklin County. What are your impressions of this place? Well, I am with Kyle Dudley. You said a fast time there. And Kyle, how much does your knowledge of this place, being a local driver, help you lay down a fast lap here? Brendan Queen's a driver that has had a lot of success here at Larry King Law's Langley Speedway, former Hampton Heat 200 winner. What's it mean to you to be able to come out here and show this kind of pace and qualify with all these stars in the cars coming? I've got Jonathan Schaefer with me, who's just been running on a wave of confidence since his victory at Ace in August. And Jonathan, what's it like when you've got momentum on your side? What's that sort of feeling like as a driver? Braden Rogers Thank here you. now for the second time at Ace Speedway. And how much easier is it to run here now that you've got a little bit of experience racing for the August event? Starting P1 in the Autos by Nelson, T25 for the Cars Tour Late Model Stock Cars. Mike Looney, after everything that you've been through this year and all the bad luck you all have had, how good does it feel to put down this lap and start up front? Starting P1, later off of the Pro Late Models this evening for the Autos by Nelson, T25, Luke Finhouse. And Luke, in the context of this championship fight where it's so close at the top of the standings, how big is this for you to be starting up front tonight? P2 for Caden Quapple this evening. And Caden, uh, what was it like... After the contact there was Wallace, uh, what, what happened at that moment? And then how did you find a way to rebound in the second half of the race? I do have Chad McCombie in down here. And Chad, we talked earlier, you said that it was huge for y'all to switch to RNS race cars this year and that uh, you had to figure out these bank tracks a little bit. You knew your flat track program was good, but the bank track program required a little bit of a rewriting of the notebook. What kind of sort of marker in the sand do you feel like tonight's race is for your team, your program, and your ability to improve on these bank tracks? You told me at Ace right before you went, you got your first win, that you felt like that this was just a continuous building process for you, that this was you growing into the series, finding your way, and now finding ways to grind out these sorts of results. Is this just sort of another step on the ladder in that direction towards being a consistent top three finisher, trying to be a driver that competes for multiple wins in the seasons to come? P2 for Katie Hettinger. And Katie, we talked a little bit after Tri-County, and you felt like that you didn't get the result that that run deserved. You felt like you had more pace, and the luck just didn't fall your way. You got caught up in it. Does this count as a bit of redemption after the way that race played out? It's a big night for Zach Miracle at the end of the Harrison's work where 225. P3 for you, your first podium in the Cars Tour, and this is one that you've been working towards for a while. So now that you've got it, what does it feel like? Jackson Boone. How many more laps? I do have Lane Riggs here with me. And Lane, just take us through your perspective of the hard racing with Landon Pebbleton at the end of the race tonight. Landon Pebbleton down here. Landon, take us through your perspective of the racing with Lane Riggs at the end of that. What's the biggest thing you've learned this season as a driver? 